I feel like making a rough, raw and casual video today, which actually already brings me to my first question to you. Should I start a casual video series, maybe like once a week, where I will just take one device and then just casually talk about the way I feel about it, which would be something like I'm going to do today. Because I got three devices yesterday, the Nokia 7.1, the Oppo Find X and also the Surface Go. And I just couldn't decide on which one I should make a preview of. And then it just came to me since I wanted to do something casual. And I said, why not just combine all three of them in one video? Now, obviously, not everyone is interested in all three of these. So just check the time codes, go to the specific one. But what you should maybe know, whenever I'm more casual and unprepared and I've just used something for a day or two, I'm also a little bit more nitpicky than I'm usual. So I go into a few things that most people don't really like to hear. In case you don't want that, maybe just stay away from these videos, maybe wait for the review or something like that, so in case maybe just subscribe to the channel. But otherwise, that's pretty much already it, right? Okay, and just in case you're wondering about the Surface Go, but actually maybe you wanna know what's up with the Surface 6 Pro, review is coming up soon enough, so we don't really need to cover that today. So let's actually already start with the first one, the Surface Go. Now, why did I even wanna talk about this since reviews are already out there? Well, I got it yesterday, and I have very mixed feelings, but on a very high note, because I actually like quite a lot of things about it. And I'm actually thinking about maybe buying one for myself, just because the thing is, I use a, lo a laptop and I use an iPad and I switch between them whatever feels best for me. For example, in the mornings, I take my iPad, watch my YouTube videos and so on, check maybe some sites and so on. But if I wanna maybe watch a video for a little bit longer, then I always get back to my laptop and I never could decide on one device. So once it was the laptop, once it was the iPad, because the iPad just can't do certain things a Windows device can do. And this device would actually maybe be the perfect sweet spot because it is a Windows machine, maybe not the most powerful one, but after all I have to say, it's the form factor because I've used the Surface 6 Pro for a few days and I really like what this, that does even more so because the speakers are better, the display is even better, but it's just way bigger. And I have to say something that I did not expect and I hope, yeah, that definitely blew up my mic, that this combo works so nice and everyone who's actually thinking about if this keyboard is big enough, I have to say yes, for 10 finger typers, it's not that hard and not that easy, but I got used to it very quickly and I like the feedback and everything else. It's backlit, it's a good size with the trackpad. So this is a very nice addition, but even I have to say that for the day that I've used it about it, actually quite a lot already, just because I like it so much, I stick with the on-screen keyboard way more than I expected. But what I also wanna give you a quick glimpse of a preview of is maybe a lot of people will think that is useful to know browsing performance because I didn't really hear much about it because everyone says, ah, can I use Chrome? And then people say, no, hey, just use Edge, it works better. Here is what I think. And I wanted to actually make a dedicated video, but I guess that's now here in the part. Now, Edge obviously runs great. But what I've noticed on the Surface Go is that the touch sensitivity is a little bit finicky because sometimes I make the same swipe twice, but the scrolling is then way bigger. So it's a little bit inconsistent. Performance obviously is great if you want to use that browser. Now, now the next thing I tried is Chrome and it works weird. Now it actually, see, as you see, it happened. I scrolled and it just stopped. Now again. And this behavior I have on all sides. I also tried it on Vivaldi, but since that one uses the Chromium engine as well, this is just not a thing. I mean, that's already a deal breaker because now it actually works better. But as you can see, it happens. And this happens still too often. And then the thing is just Edge is super nice. And on a device like this, I guess the sweet spot to go for. But Chrome would have been my thing because after all, everything syncs with Chrome. Even though on my desktops, I have to say I use Firefox all the time. And I said, let's just give it a try and see what how it works. And look at this. This is actually pretty smooth. It's not edge smooth, but it's nice and smooth. There is no touch issue. And it's a little bit of a slower scrolling, which is actually good because you don't have so much space on the screen. So this could be it. This could be what saved me from not buying this device. I'm not quite sure if I will buy it yet because I just have to say, it feels so nice in the hand to do all daily tasks because I can use this just like my iPad whenever, when, every time when the surface is just too heavy. There is the, the, the pen, which works really great. I will obviously get to all of that in the review. Now, as you can see, quite some more array because the resolution is not the highest. And I have to say, I've used this already a little bit more up close and I would wish for the resolution to be a little bit higher. But from a normal distance, especially if you use it more with 
both the trackpad and the keyboard, it works out nice, but that's a little bit of a concern. The speakers are good, but they are not Surface 6 Pro good. I mean, I wish, wish for them to be louder, but for the size, I mean, they are fine. And this is about the performance. What I usually do, despite the thing with Chrome, it actually works out quite good. Yes, sometimes it has a little bit of a delay when you press something, it takes a little bit longer to open a window or something like that. Yeah, it's not perfect, but this is not supposed to be a laptop replacement. That is the Surface 6 Pro. This is, in my opinion, something like this in between. It's more capable than an iPad in some ways, but it's just more casual than a laptop and it's so easy to carry around. And I, for example, I watch so many videos at certain different places. Sometimes I take it here, sometimes in the kitchen, sometimes in the bedroom, Listen, if I want to read a PDF or something like that. And the stand is so, so convenient. I mean, if the iPad would have the capability to properly download files with a normal browser and have a stand, it would be pretty much a no-brainer because there I get the better display, I get the more compact feel, I get the better battery life, speaker should be better and so on. But that's just not a thing iOS is too limiting. But if I want to do whatever I do usually on my laptop, not quite as convenient as like on the laptop, this might be it. So I need a little bit more testing. Obviously, I need to know how good the battery life is. From some people, I have five to six hours. If I get solid six hours, that would be actually already very good for me. Then I guess I would be already sold. But we'll have to see about that. So overall, to sum it up for a preview, obviously, this feels so much better than you would expect it to be. And I don't mean the design itself, but I mean in general. Because at first, when I saw it the first time on EFA, I thought, yeah, the display not quite that amazing, the speakers and so on, the performance maybe won't be good, but the performance is actually good. I did not expect Firefox to run that well. Sites load quite quickly. You can do whatever I normally do. And obviously, forget Windows S. No, <laughs> Windows S stayed on this PC for like for five minutes, just because I needed that long to switch from it. But the build is great. It feels great. The stand is amazing. The speaker is fine and everything else. So, so far, I really like it. So I have to see if it will be my daily driver and pretty much replace my laptop and my iPad because those are due to refresh anyways. And that's why I would say let's go into this beauty here the Oppo Find X and I don't like this phone at all <laughs> after one day I have to say there's so much wrong with it and it's not the design I mean it feels and especially you can't really even see this on video but this gradient green this looks so sweet it feels good in the hand and especially the size isn't even as horrible as I thought it would be because if you compare this with a OnePlus this is just a little bit taller but actually even not narrow okay thicker yes but, okay, let's get into the things that I don't like so much. And this is already just on the lower end side of not liking it so much because there are some things that I really don't like. Now, what I don't like is the glare due to the curved screen. Not a whole issue. I got used to that on the XZ and I got used to that on other devices as well. But the thing is, maybe you've seen it already, the unlock with the camera every time. And now it doesn't do it because if you hold it in your hand, it doesn't check it again. But if you unlock your phone quite conveniently, quite often, this is not the way to go for because the camera swipes out. And, and I, I don't know what else to say because especially if it closes now. Can you hear this? There is some wiggle room. No. Buttons are nice. Build quality is really nice. Feels good in the hand. Actually really amazing. Like like a Note 9, but a little bit smaller after all, S9 Plus or something like that. So really well done here. It actually feels and looks a lot like it. Buttons also, obviously. But then, I mean, the hardware is kind of still the best part <laughs> if we get to that, because the display is a really nice 1080p display, but no options to change anything. I mean, with 1080p for this size, it's actually quite sharp. Calibration is okay, but I can't change it. I just don't like the fact. Then speaker is fine. Performance, actually it seems crazy fast. This feels super smooth. So this is like top, 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 top. Um, I can't even put a number to it. This is superb performance. But yeah, battery life I can't judge, but it should be very good because the battery is quite big and then 1080p AMOLED. But the problem is this horrible software. And I, I just can't get used to it because the thing is, just like on the Vivo, if we go into additional settings, developer settings, 
you can't turn them on without this annoying thing. I don't know why, because in this case, I can't even change the DPI and the JP, G, um, DPI by this on this phone by default with 360 is just way too big. It should be at around 411, like on the OnePlus or 420, which is what I've used, but this is not up, this is not okay. And therefore I can't also change the scale, which means I have to turn them off. Therefore everything is too big. And the animations are just, in my opinion, too slow. I think 0.5 is right, 1.0 is too slow. The next thing, for example, what I have, if I have an app and I go into a site and I wanna go back, I have a gesture that allows me to go back, but not here, because if I turn it on, let's actually try it. Now, my, my normal gestures still work. As you can see here, I can still X enter all the apps. But what I can't do is swipe back because what it wants to do now is uh, services. Smart Exit Launcher on. No, once again, yellow. I mean, what the? Yeah, it even turned it off right now. So this means I can't use my gesture that I so, so much rely on. And then the software doesn't really add any functionality. It just looks odd, behaves odd. Weird limitations. I mean, this is still okay and everything else. And I mean, obviously, this is complaining on a nerdy factor because not everyone changes DPIs. Not everyone changes the, uh, the the speed of the animations and needs developer options. For all those, don't care. And especially with the back swiping, not a thing. But still the UI is odd. And I mean, there are for good reason enough for YouTubers that said great hardware and everything else, but the software is just a little break. And for me, those small things are actually already reviews. I mean, it's not a beautiful UI but it gets the job done otherwise. So don't care too much about it if you are not someone who's very software centric. I'm personally not because I can pretty much use whatever software I get, but not if I can't get these nerdy features. That's just me. Update and so on, I can't even judge and I don't even care. Camera, I haven't even tried yet because this put me so off in this one day that I don't really want to talk about it much more. And I'm not quite sure if I will even use this for long enough to make a proper review of it because if I can't use a phone, like any other, pretty much any other, so not the Vivo phone, for example, any other Android phone, if I'm so limited to things that I'm used to for years and years and years, changing the animation speed, changing the DPI, usually you don't really need to, but on bigger phones sometimes, and the back swiping, nerdy, geeky stuff, useless stuff, nitpicky stuff, yes, but for me, essential. So... If this, if this would even run stock Android, which I'm not the biggest fan of since it's too limiting, I would be fine because the hardware is sweet, but not nearly a thousand euros sweet. What What is the price when it comes actually to Europe and so on? So, nah, especially with the unlock and so on. But yeah, let's get into this one here. I got it yesterday and I've used it for the whole day and for work day and I'm still not impressed. I mean, the first reviews that I saw, in my opinion, are all overrating this phone because I have to say, yes, design, it feels crazy good, way better than I expected, which actually mostly has to do with the sides because I don't know how they made this feel. And this pretty much feels like the Nokia 6 as well or some other Nokias already, but in combination with the glass and these curves, even though it doesn't have the curve that makes it feel narrow on, this, on the back, it feels so nice in the hand. Okay, yeah, we have a chin, it's fine, we have a notch. And I have to actually say I have no issue at all with this notch. It's so small, I mean, you can't hide it. But this this notch is nothing to me, it's fine. The phone, what I also like is, yeah, it's smaller, 5.8 inches. This is big, I mean small. And I mean big in a good way because we don't really get many phones like this these days. So a nice mid-range phone that is not super huge is nice. And the, for example, for me, especially in this case, the fingerprint reader is perfectly placed, even though the power button is a little bit higher, but not a problem, but it feels very good, no wiggling. And the fingerprint reader well works okay, but that's just that. I don't wanna to talk too much about this is casual, supposed to be, right? <laughs> so let's talk about the display. It seems bright, I haven't measured it yet, and it seems very, very clear, but Android one. Android One limits this phone because we get no option to adjust anything, which is so sad because this display by default is just a little bit too cold. And yes, we have the HDR mode here, which is a little bit odd because sometimes you see the switch happening and it's a little bit annoying because especially if you turn it on, sometimes I don't think I will be able to show this, but if we go into YouTube, if 
on some certain content, this switches to something overly contrasty. So it's a little bit odd, but it's a nice display, but I don't think I will give it more than four stars. The speaker sounds loud. It's okay, but also not anything groundbreaking. Well, headphone jack, we have at that, that at least we have. Performance seems good, but actually not even Snapdragon 636 good that it should be because, I mean, it's smooth. Yes, as you can see here and for whatever we do, but I see a lot more stutters and a lot more little slowdowns that I usually see on Snapdragon 636. And that's why I obviously wish for a 660, because a 660 I don't think is so much more expensive, because after all it's just a 636 on steroids, but I've not seen a 660 run bad yet. But a 636, to me actually what I think is, is a 636 is a failed 660, so it didn't make it, and that's why it got only a 636, but there is a reason why I didn't get it, because something just feels off on these devices, a little bit. I mean, normal use, absolutely fine. But for this price, you can get already better performing phones. It's just that battery life, on my very first day, I have to say, actually doesn't seem so good. I mean, I made my all my photos, and but battery life seemed, didn't seem that convincing yet. I need more days, because what I've noticed on Android Go for, on Android One phones, for the first day, my battery life is usually pretty bad. So I have to restart them, and then it settles. But the first day was quite disappointing. It looked like a little bit over four hours screen on time, which can't be a thing. The 646 is sufficient. The battery is big enough, so we should easily get more. I'm not saying any values yet, but more. <sighs> Software, Android One. We don't need to talk about that. In my opinion, it's limiting, but it works. And then the camera. I don't know what to say about it. It's it's for a three hundred fifty dollar Nokia phone, not good enough. I mean, the main cam didn't look promising. I will show it obviously in the review. Nothing special. The, the video cam, okay. The front facing cam, okay. Low light, not good because especially with the flash, it overexposes all the time. Without the flash, it's very blurry. So low light is a little bit disappointing. So for $350, this package to me seems overrated and overpriced. If this goes down to like 250 and I just have to base that on the competition that we have there because we have competition like a lot of Xiaomi phones these days and even Honor and Huawei phones and so on or, or whatever else. But for 300 to 250 you can get better. I mean, this is nice. I mean, the, if everything would be as good as the build quality in the inhead field, it would be way better. But the display, super nice, but nice <laughs> and not calibratable, <laughs> if that's a word. But I can't change it because it looks a little bit off-puttingly cold compared to anything else that I've had. The speaker is fine. Performance is fine. Battery life should be fine. Battery, the camera isn't even really that fine. And just because of the Android One, Logo on front, it's not really on the front, I mean, but I mean that as the big advantage of having updates and so on. I mean, this phone is not good enough. I mean, it's very nice phone. And if you like Nokia, if you like the in and feel it, and if you like the aspects, what it does, yes. But value-wise, not yet. If it goes down, but from from the hands-on that I've seen, everyone said, wow, this is now in the US for $350. dollars Such a nice device, great value. Now we finally have something like that as well. Maybe maybe it's unfortunate for the US not having really good mid ranges because everyone buys the flagships on contracts, but especially judging from here in Germany or in Europe in general, we have options for something better or cheaper. Okay, video actually didn't turn out to be that long. And it wasn't, I mean, it was a quite nice mix, I would say, because partially casual, but at least not as super overwhelmingly stubbornly robotic like my normal previews and the mix with free device i think went fine so for everyone who wants a quick conclusion this the surface go has so much potential i like it i would i really would have wished for to this to be a shrunken down surface pro obviously that's not because that's not what it's meant to be this is supposed to be kind of competitive to the ipad in schools and so on i totally get that but if they would have allowed for a more premium option so make it even more so expensive then it is already overpriced a little bit after all still but i've seen good deals already but a shrunken down maybe like core m or core m version of the surface pro wow better speaker and so on, then I would have been fully sold because then I would have been fine to pay so much for something so little that it's not so crazy kind of spec. But 
the form factor. I think the form factor, and you have to, you have to use it for that to actually get it. Because when I just saw videos about it, everyone said, yes, yeah, nice, casual, and all that. But once I've used it for just an hour already, I, I actually already the first minute when I had it in my hands and felt, well, this is super portable, which is not the case for the Surface Pro. Yeah. Find X. Sweet, sweet, sweet in some aspects, even way more than sweet hardware. Super nice design, but the software experience is not it. So what they would have to do if they want to go international, into Europe and so on, they need to change the UI. With this UI, no one in Europe will buy it. With this UI, <laughs> no. Android One people will buy it, but actually, for me, I would wish for something more on this android one is just android one i mean i don't get the appeal i get the appeal of long updates sweet but what then no customizability no extra features no settings I can't even hide the notch no special things the camera isn't as good as it should have been this yeah all good but uh, obviously like i said i'm a little bit more nitpicky in these videos because i'm Everyone has at its first time its, uh, its honeymoon period where he loves everything about this device. I function the other way around. I have my nitpicky face and I'm still in that. After a few days, things go away. Well, here I don't think so. And here I don't think so because I have to say my first day impression is pretty much accurate. So far, it never let me down. You like this video? Subscribe, like, and let me know if you like the casual day.